heavens. I thought Mason probably had you hanging from a hill by your stubby little fingernails. I'm not worried about the criminal charges. I'll win. It's just the publicity. I'll weather it. Oh, come on. You've worked too hard to let your career be jeopardized at this point. I think I have a few good years left. Don't be grouchy. Here. I have a list of all the slimy things Mason has done. Somewhere on this is something someone can put him in jail for. Augusta, no. Mason's only doing this because if he doesn't, he'll fall apart. I know how he feels. Maybe C.C. can talk some sense into him. The hills are littered with the bones of people who have depended on C.C.'s good graces. Now, I cannot go off to Tibet knowing that Mason's gunning for you. Oh, go ahead. Leave me. Don't worry about my splitting fingernails and my six gray hairs. Tibet? Mm-hmm. That's where Lionel's going. Gone this morning. <laughs> Won't he be surprised? <laughs> Why don't you quit pussyfooting around and either scrap the divorce and remarry him? Because he's much nicer to me now. And you're so much nicer to him now. Mm -hmm. It's baffling. It's romantic. It's backwards. Well, I want you to see my stunning new acquisition. <laughs> it's you, Augusta. <laughs> What are you going to do with those? What do you mean? They're perfect for the Himalayas. I would do anything for him. I thought that you would show up. Eventually, the dedication was short and simple. I was trying to avoid... Your absence made more of an impression than you actually being here, but of course you already know that. Julia. I suppose it would be too much to hope to be left alone right now. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid it would. I don't know how much longer you're going to be unable to conduct human relations, but there are things that need to be considered, Mason. Shoes on the other foot. When it was David that rode off into the sunset, alive and unscathed, well, heaven help the poor man that said a word amiss to poor jilted Julia. I'm not belittling your grief, Mason, and I'm certainly not going to compete with it. But it's a little much when you try to ruin somebody's life, and then you tell that injured party that you're simply not in the mood to discuss it. I've been to the courthouse. You've been busy, haven't you? I was there. You dropped the charges against your father, but yet you set up a court date for me. I can't stand this. Mason, what you're accusing Julia of, she did not do. She had no intention of defending Mark McCormick. She just wanted to make sure he went to prison. I will swear to that any way you want. I have already told him all she of that. She thought the rape wouldn't be proven in court, so she jeopardized her entire profession for Mary. I tried to talk her out of it, so why don't you sue me, too? Say something. Do you believe me? I'm not going to let your family keep avenging themselves on the people I love. Do you believe me? Maybe. Thank you for that. I'm sorry about your loss. Julia, I have to catch a plane. I'll be right there. You're not going to drop the charges, are you? Quite a testimonial. You don't care either, do you? Augusta seems to believe it, but is it true? And if it's true, do I owe you a debt of gratitude because you decided to let Mark pay for his crime? The charges I'm accused of are criminal negligence leading up to Mary's death. Forget gratitude. I'm asking for fairness, Mason. What are we doing up on the roof with Mary and Mark? Did you arrange it? No. If not, why didn't you try to stop Mark? There's nothing to stop, Mason. We're not solving a murder here. What happened was a terrible accident, and Mark had nothing to do with it, and I certainly didn't. And you won't be able to prove otherwise, Mason, and even if you try... Why? You put Augusta on the stand and get yourself disbarred? Do you think that this is what Mary would want for you right now, this kind of self-indulgence and accusation? Mary doesn't answer me anymore. But she wouldn't say the things you're saying. That's right. She loved you. And that should be all you need to know. 
She wouldn't blame you for anything, Mason. She wouldn't blame you for the fact that she was up on the roof with Mark. She wouldn't blame you for driving her and insisting that she take this private agony of hers and turn it into a public matter. I'd say it. But she wouldn't. She wouldn't blame you for anything. So you don't have to fire a flurry of, of documents in every direction to keep those of us who know what happened from pointing a finger at you. We know that you pushed her too far, Mason. But you didn't kill her. I'm sorry. But that just needed to be said.